Increasingly, we are seeing businesses skyrocket from nowhere into market dominant positions by creating disruptive business models that frankly, on paper, appear nuts, crazy, impossible. Point in case, imagine listening to a pitch by Brian Chesky, the founder and CEO of Airbnb, when he approached venture capitalists for his first round of funding. Now, Brian Chesky was looking for $150,000 for a 10% stake in his business. Imagine you are the venture capitalist, and I am Brian Chesky. Okay, dragons, I have an exciting business proposition for you. It's going to be the hottest thing in hospitality. My idea is blow up mattresses in strangers' homes being made available to random travelers. So dragons, what do you think? $150,000 for 10% stake in my business? Just sign here. Of the seven venture capitalists Brian Chesky approached, how many do you think turned him down? Yes, you got it. Five rejected the opportunity outright and two never even had the decency to come back with an answer. But then let's be fair to these investors who in their right mind would invest in a business model that as legendary investor Fred Wilson now remorsefully says, we couldn't wrap our heads around air mattresses on the living room floors as the next hotel room and did not chase the deal. Today, a disheartened Fred Wilson knows that the 10% that was on offer is valued at an amazing $2.5 billion. Airbnb have rocketed to a position of the largest hospitality company in the world with over 1.5 million listings in 34,000 cities, 192 countries within the space of seven years. And the advice from Brian Chesky, next time you have a crazy idea and it gets rejected, I want you to think about this. Something to reflect on, because as I show in my book, Quest, Brian Chesky's quest to dominate the hospitality industry fits neatly within the three qualities of a quest. The idea appeared crazy impossible. It delivered meaningful benefits to millions of travelers and the quest's destination was always crystal clear. Now there are good reasons behind believing some things are impossible, especially when they have been built into societal and our organizational psyche. We spend a good portion of our lives learning established models. We go to school, train for a career, we hone our craft, our skills, we make great effort to learn basic principles and are praised when we show we have grasped them. As we strive to become masters of our craft, we find that our proficiency increases. So too does our success and status. A new idea, whether it be scientific or operational, uh, gains power through the, its capacity to solve problems. As it proves its worth, it gains acceptance and becomes the accepted established model. Achieving the impossible therefore requires challenging established paradigms and principles that are generally well accepted. This is not an easy task because we learn our experiences, behavior, they become hardwired in our brains through a process that neuroscientists call hebium plasticity. The expression neurons that fire together, wire together, is attributed to neuropsychologist Donald Hebb. The phrase essentially explains the chemical reaction going on in our brain as we learn. Over time, specific neurons associated uh, become associated with each behavior, emotion, and feeling. Alvaro Pascal Leon, another neuroscientist, gave a brilliant analogy in his book, The Brain That Changes Itself, in which he compared the brain to a snowy hill in winter. When we first go down the hill in a sled, we can be flexible because we have options of taking various paths through the soft snow each time. If we begin to favor a certain path, they become speedy and efficient, gliding the shed swiftly down the hill. Changing these paths becomes increasingly difficult as we literally become stuck in ruts 
that we have created. Human behavior and thoughts operate on the same principle. Our behavior creates preferred chemical pathways in our brains that eventually make these behaviors so efficient that they are difficult to change. We ourselves become stuck in our own ruts. As we learn a particular way of doing things in our organization or our profession and industry, it becomes accepted best practice, which in turn is hardwired into our brain as the correct way to do things. We are encouraged, rewarded, and controlled into complying and conforming with the accepted best practice. And to deviate from these accepted paradigms actually violates and offends our intellectual sense of how the world works. Hebb's law states that learning is not simply something that something impressed upon our passive brain, but a process in which the cellular structure of the brain is permanently modified. The difficulty, therefore, in going against the grain to prove the impossible possible is that the resulting behavior threatens to upset the apple cart of accepted wisdom and the places in question the validity of paradigms that have given power and prominence to the establishment. So take for example, in 1975, Stephen Sasson invented the digital camera. Kodak was his employer at the time. However, his bosses, who clearly felt the new paradigm offended their senses of the world, told him that the camera would never see the light of day. Sasson believed that 2 million pixels would be capable of competing against 110 negative film. His first digital camera produced only 10,000 pixels, so the quality was not very good. Executives asked him when digital would be able to compete against film. So using Moore's law, which predicts how fast computing technology advances, Sasson estimated approximately 50 to 20, 15 to 20 years. Now, when you're talking to a bunch of corporate guys about 18 to 20 years into the future, well, none of them became very excited about it, said Sasson in an interview with the New York Times. Unable to shift with digital photography, Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012. In a world of disruptive change, embarking on quests need to be part of your strategic DNA. Because firstly, the rewards are massive when you are at the forefront of creating a new paradigm. And secondly, if you do not, you will be disrupted by someone else who figures out how to make the impossible possible. We've already explored this with Brian Chesky's Airbnb, which took under a decade to disrupt the hotel industry. Uber, the transportation company started by Travis Kalanick, disrupted the taxi industry worldwide in five years. The trend where questers reshape industrial landscape by making the impossible possible is not an aberration that will go back to normal. It is now the normal. It's important to reflect on the, that the current paradigms were once radical thinking too. This is an evolutionary, sometimes even a revolutionary process. So Isaac Newton was considered a radical thinker who reshaped the laws of nature and ushered in a new era of mechanics. Until that is, Einstein created a new paradigm of relativity by showing that Newton's mechanics were flawed. During the age of quest, this age that we live in now, the speed at which business and industries are being disrupted is increasing. The world is changing and moving too quickly to stick with trusted old paradigms. The only way to keep up with the pace of change is to identify the quests in your world of influence that will have a meaningful difference and to constantly seek where challenging the impossible makes strategic sense. Constant adaption is the only viable strategy and people on quests are capable of adapting because they understand the importance and the value in shifting paradigms. Larry Page, the founder of Google, uses the term moonshots to describe his questing innovations. At Google, Page encourages experimentation and free flow of ideas for all Googlers who share a desire to challenge what's possible. 
most companies, he says, are happy with 10% improvements. But Mr. Page, who believes this essentially entails standing still and doing the same thing as everyone else, Mr. Page seeks improvements by factors of 10. Thousand percent improvement requires tackling problems with energy, vigor, and commitment. It requires radically rethinking problems, exploring the edge, and pushing the envelope of what is thought possible. It requires making the impossible possible with a resolute conviction that what you are doing will make a meaningful difference. These requirements are the essence of a leader's quest, and this is why quests are such powerful change catalysts. I'm buoyed by the fact that there is a vanguard of superstar questers who have already embarked on quests to find solutions that will reignite economic growth, create new jobs, and solve many of the world's most pressing problems. But more questers are urgently needed to take advantage of the age of quests that is unfolding before us. While the majority of business leaders and entrepreneurs run around saying, I'm going to improve the efficiencies on this or that existing product, or I'm building a better social media app, questers go about identifying inefficiencies and in systems that matter most to people. By looking for areas that are malfunctioning, they embark on quests that challenge the impossible and make the world a better place. The challenges of the 21st century are too massive to be overcome by being con creatively conservative and managing with the manager's mindset of the three C's, control, compliance and conformity. The three C's need to be relinquished. Audacious rethinking and new solutions are required if the century is going to be the greatest ever. Solutions will not come from the conservative center occupied by an industrialized mind management mindset. Individuals and organizations need to be set free and the power of the leadership quest which has advanced societies in the past can be used to magnificent effect. The power of quest can be found in how each quest binds teams and informs and inspires people to work together and make bold, pos positive differences. Quests attract the best talent, they empower people and unleash passion and energy. Quests that challenge the impossible give people a sense of purpose, which in turn encourages creativity, experimentation and innovation. Quests are not about relinquishing control. Take Steve Jobs or Elon Musk. Many of the greatest questers are self-confessed control freaks, but they understand how the power of a quest inspires people's imagination and channels their energy and engagement. When on a quest, the most successful leaders appear to set wildly ambitious goals. They celebrate failure as an opportunity to unlearn and relearn new paradigms as quickly as they can and they give their team members the autonomy required to fail fast, rethink and innovate. Our research at Tomorrow Today shows that great strides forward are achieved when people and organizations embark on quests. By harnessing the qualities of a quest, leaders are able to unleash a powerful force of positive change. Not everyone steps out onto the grand world-changing quest, but anyone can embark on a quest that improves their immediate world, the part of your community where you have the greatest influence. We all have a sphere of influence. Uh, Stephen Covey, in his immensely successful book, The Seven Habits of Successful People, references the circle of concern and the circle of influence. You can be concerned about global poverty, but your circle of influence may be limited. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go on a quest to tackle the impossible task of ending poverty. For example, every year my colleague Graham Codrington embarks on a quest to live below the line. This challenge involves choosing to eat and drink on only one pound a day 
for a grueling five days. Doing this enables him to raise funds and heightens the awareness for people living in poverty. Together, a community of 4,000 questers living in the UK who are passionate about ending poverty have raised £700,000 to empower the world's poorest communities. Graham said to me, he doesn't have the ability to end poverty, but through his circle of influence, he can make a difference. Quests can therefore be big or small, personal or professional, but the fundamental framework remains the same. The reality is, anyone can be a quester. Find a quest that delivers meaningful benefits to the people who are most important in your world. Be they family, friends, customers, or co-workers. Then row the boat out further. Push the envelope of what is accepted as being possible. You might just discover the next big innovation that makes a difference in the world you influence. As Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbour, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover, be successful.